Welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. I'm Dana Cowley and today our team is in the state room of Washington's capital city of Olympia. We've come to cover the key issues of 2015 in the legislative session. And my guest now is Republican Representative Terry Neely from Dayton. Terry, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you being here. Thank you. You have an interesting issue I haven't heard anyone talk much about today and it's about public records and costs. Right, uh, it's a problem, we feel. Uh, of course, we all like transparency, which means that every citizen ought to be able to have an opportunity to obtain records or information from their government. Yes. And we have a, a law that uh, allows them, the citizens, to be able to do that. The problem is that when it's abused, when the system is abused for harassment purposes or otherwise, it can cost a city or county or port district or school district or hospital a whole lot of money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes these things are extreme. As reporters, reporters are accustomed to requesting these kinds of records to pursue some type of a story, but sometimes other members who are not journalists pursue it for all kinds of reasons. And what things do you see? And that's the problem. And uh, for example, if somebody gets a citation from a police department and they don't like it, uh, there's an example in Prosser, for example, and uh, this individual uh, required or asked for information on every police officer that the city had, uh, had hired, and then ended up suing because they didn't get all the records in time. The problem is it's costing cities and counties a lot of money to add staff and to go over through hundreds of emails and paperwork and so forth that adds up to a big cost. Some cities and counties saying it's costing up to $500,000, for example, in additional personnel and time to be able to satisfy these uh, requests. Mm. If they're legitimate requests, that's fine. But some of them, in rare instances, are not legitimate. So what I would like to see is some bill or some way that we can handle those abusers. Otherwise, to be able to have the city or county go to court or have a third party or entity be able to, to be responsible for making a decision as to whether this is really abusive or not. Mm. There's got to be a system to help uh, these cities and counties from expending huge amount of taxpayers' dollars just to satisfy some of these requests. Yeah, and sometimes just the printing alone. I mean, sometimes you can satisfy that via email by emailing the information, but if it has to be printed and delivered, that alone really adds up. That's right. There's one example that I have that they asked for about 500,000 printed copies, and at the end he only needed or wanted about 6,000 of that. So a lot of it went to waste. So there's a lack of communication. There's got to be a better system to make this work. Yeah, and that's a fine balance because you don't want to have a chilling effect on the general public or the media getting the information from the people that they're actually funding with their tax dollars. You know, and that's, that's legitimate. That's so. exactly right. And so I co-sponsored a bill in this session that asked for charges, legitimate charges that could be paid or charged to the requester at a very minor level, and if it's for electronic copies, it would be almost nothing, because it doesn't cost so much for electronic copies. But for paper copies and other things, it can be very expensive. So there needs to be some better balance. And also, um, jumping subjects now, you're the ranking member on the Finance Committee, and you have a little more money to deal with this year than you normally do. How is the budget looking from your perspective? Well, it's still going to be very, very tight because of our Supreme Court requirements to fully fund education. We have some mental health requirements. Uh, we've got the debt service and so forth. So we, unfortunately, we still have big bills. We have $3 billion more billion in this biennium. Unfortunately, it isn't $3 billion net that a lot of the public thinks we have. A lot of that's already been dedicated toward the McCleary decision and so forth to fully fund education mm -hmm. from the last year because you got to keep continue to fund that in each year. So unfortunately we don't have a net of three billion dollars. So I am hoping we can pass out a budget without new revenue but it's going to be a very very big challenge. And for those who feel a little more secure with savings, any thought of what portion might end up in the rainy day fund? I doubt that anything will end up new money in the rainy day fund. We have almost a billion dollars in the rainy day fund. And uh, if we can add to that, it would be great, but I doubt that we'll be able to do that. I just hope we can protect it. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. This is Terry Neely. I'm Dana Cowley in Olympia, and you're watching Charter Local Edition Northwest. Mm -hmm.